Everyone, the telephone lines are open. The number to call in New York, 212-563-WABC. If you're calling from New Jersey, 201-489-WABC. In a program dedicated to the free and open exchange of ideas and of opinions. And what is on your mind this afternoon? We should be rejoicing. We have a full program today, no interruption. No interruption from a sporting event. Ladies and gentlemen, the nation waits. The nation holds its collective breath, and why? The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced this is perhaps the greatest travesty of our time. Four police officers doing their job. How many people know that when they had the chokehold, which was the prescribed conduct for the Los Angeles Police Department, when they had that, they had to get rid of it because a couple of people died. Now, why does anybody die from a chokehold? I'll tell you why. If they resist. And officers told the individuals they were arresting not to resist. After all, you are not supposed to resist an arm of the law. And because some people died, two, three people, and they died because of their own, their own uh, uh, attempts to extricate themselves rather than any extra force applied by the police, they outlawed. They outlawed the chokehold. And therefore, the four police officers could not use a chokehold on this behemoth, on this raging monster called Rodney. They could not do that. And the new prescribed methodology of subduing a recalcitrant fleeing felon was uh, to uh, hit them with the baton. And that is indeed what they were doing. But because it was captured on tape and because it was shown over and over and over again, who here can say he has not seen it 100, 200, 300 times? And because all the politicians from the then president on down wanted to take advantage of the situation and play demagogue, and I remember the former president saying, it sickened me to look at it. Well, then don't look. You're supposed to be running the country. What are you doing watching a tape over and over again? These men never should have been brought to trial in the first place, and they certainly shouldn't have been brought to trial in the second place. But as the days drag on and the verdict does not come in, you don't have to be Albert Einstein to figure out what's going on. The judge says, I don't want a hung jury. Well, all right, come in with an acquittal and get it over with. And so we hold our collective breath. Did you know that New York's criminal court judges are, um, according to uh, a writer for the New York Post, should get off their Ill elevated benches and spend a week sitting on the benches in Greenwich Village's uh, Washington Square Park. That way, reality may penetrate their black robes. Jack Dufield says he's not only spent afternoons in the park, but also he has not spent the la he, but he has spent the last week analyzing the computerized court records of the top recidivist drug dealers in Washington Square Park. The results are astonishing. They reveal that even after 30 and 40 misdemeanor convictions for selling marijuana, these dealers are getting off with time served, small fines, and even community service. The park has been a violent mess for years. Every morning, crack vials and used hypodermic needles can be found in the children's sandbox. Middle-class families feel displaced because 
crack-addicted drug sellers rule quadrants of this beautiful public space. And there's the photos of two of these savages. John Outerbridge, never more than 30 days in spite of all his transgressions. And Leslie Kazan, who always gets off easy. And you wonder why? You wonder why there's no, no fear of the law. Why should there be? I, uh, I would like to thank Wilfredo Torres for sharing this with us. He says, Dear Mr. Grant, please consider the following item. An illegal alien who is over eight months pregnant walks into a doctor's office to have an abortion. The doctor attempts to perform the procedure but cannot finish it and sends the woman home. Soon thereafter, she gives birth to a child to whom one of her arms has been amputated. The woman claims that she did not know about her advanced state of pregnancy and successfully testifies in court against the butcher that performed the operation. Item. An immigration supervisor holds the highest number of awards in INS, carries raids into grocery stores that sell drugs, arms, and so forth. He is thereafter accused and convicted of violating the rights of the illegal aliens that he arrested. This injustice is partially corrected through a pardon from the President of the United States. Item. A police officer is accused of arresting five illegal aliens that were, distributing, that were disturbing the peace late at night and transporting two of them to the police station in the trunk of his patrol car. This policeman is later exonerated thanks to the intervention of community groups. Item. A community active individual who denounces that illegal aliens are registering to vote by the hundreds of thousands in New York State does not receive attention from the authorities, but does receive death threats from illegal aliens. Item. A police officer kills a known drug dealer during a hand-to-hand -hand combat. Drug dealers persuade the community to riot, causing additional deaths and damage to property. And it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. Many items that are listed by Mr. Torres, who uh, has an organization called Comité Contra la Migración Extranjera a Puerto Rico. Mr. Torres is sick and tired of these illegal aliens who are giving his people a bad name. He wants something done about it. Well, Mr. Torres, it won't be done as long as this boob is in City Hall. And ladies and gentlemen, you may have uh, read the report which appeared on yesterday's uh, front page of the New York Times stating that Hanoi has lied about how many POWs it had. It did not admit to having 1,205, but apparently that is what they said in a secret letter, which has now been uncovered thanks to our friends in Moscow. And, of course, this should be looked into, but isn't it interesting that on April 2nd, a report came out about Senator John Kerry, that ultra-left-wing skunk, who unfortunately is the junior senator from Massachusetts and who is the chairman of the former Senate Select Committee uh, for POWMIA Affairs. Do you know that at one time he had ordered his staff director, Francis Zwenig, to shred key documents relating to the live sighting of American POWs in Vietnam? Additionally, Kerry ordered Zwenig to have the computers of the select committee investigators purged of information pertaining to these reports. Sources quoted in this article requested not to be identified pending investigation of the Kerry committee. John Kerry, you've got a lot to answer for, you fake, phony fraud. By the way, in case you're wondering, John Kerry was a radical pro-Hanoi war activist in the 1970s very similar to Slick Willie Clinton. I'm happy to tell you that within the next week or so, we are going to be visited in our studio live 
by David Brock. David Brock has put together the most compelling indictment of a woman who slandered a fine man and who caused an absolutely absolutely undeserving person to be elected to the United States Senate in the place of another fine man. He is exposing for what she is and what she has been, and that is a liar. He is exposing Anita Hill brilliantly. Now, there will be those who will never believe David Brock's evidence, even though the evidence would reach the top of the Empire State Building because there are people who choose to believe what they want to believe and do not be do not be dissuaded by the evidence. I look forward to Mr. Brock's appearance on this program. He has written a compelling book called The Real Anita Hill. And I herald his approaching visit for two reasons. Number one, what he says is extremely important. And number two, you probably won't hear him or see him on many other programs. I have a sneaking suspicion the word is out, don't have David Brock on the Today Show. Don't have him on Good Morning America. Don't have him on Harry, what's his name? Harry Smith and Paula Zahn. He might, he might make it on Larry King. But the book speaks for itself, and I want to congratulate George Will for his brilliant review of this book. Oh. How you doing, Bob? Hey, listen, uh, it's good to see you're not sweating the eye, Miss Thing. You know, the guy stopped being funny about 50 years ago, so, you know, it's not hurting you any. Get you a couple listeners. Yeah, no, no, it's not hurting me any. No, no. people tune over, they'll hear, oh, gee, let's listen, you know, let's yeah. listen to what he's talking about. Oh. That's not the real reason I called. First time I heard you talk about us heading toward third worldism, I thought you were cracked. But I think you're right. I've turned around. You are right. You know, this thing with uh, Rodney King and the fact that they won't uh, do the, the retrial of Lemerick Nelson, it's just, you know, we're scared. You know, we're afraid to stand up to anything anymore. No one wants to take the stand. Well, I can see it all now. The day will come when uh, we will have a union uh, between uh, the United States and uh, South Africa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, but well, well, once they, you know, take over down there too. Right. You know, it'll. I mean, that that's really when when it'll be the fifty-first state. When when uh, a, a group of people can hold us hostage, when you've got when you've got individuals making decisions on people's lives based not on the uh, evidence, not on the testimony uh, in a court of law, but based on fear of conflagration in the streets, then you no longer have the United States of America. Right, and it's not even the majority of the people we're afraid of. It's a small faction that, yep. you know, in, in urban areas, small towns that just kick up a fuss and everything works their way because, oh, well, we don't want to get beat up, we don't want to get shot at. No. And that's going to that's gonna be what kills this country. Yeah, well, um, somewhere in the middle of the 21st century, um, I don't expect to be around. <laughs> so I won't know whether I'm right or, or not. But there probably will be what amounts to a civil war. And it, it will probably be between uh, the, uh, the Asians, who by then will number great, uh, great uh, percentage of the population. And, uh, and those, uh, those people that we're talking about. Oh, sure. Uh, with uh, uh, the white says... Uh, onlookers or people hiding in basements. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't like to make that prediction, but uh, that's what I foresee, the rate we're going. Oh. And uh, there's nothing's going to stop it, because when, when you can have a, a group of individuals take the second largest city in the country and hold it in the palm of its hand any time it wants, what does that tell you? It tells me New York is probably next. 
Well, it's, it, it, the United States is next. Well, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be one of these things that just starts to creep up. You know, it starts in L.A., then it'll be yeah. New York, then it'll be my... And, and what kind of country is it where you have a, a jerk like John Kluge, that pompous oaf, uh, who uh, gives $60 million to Columbia University for minority scholarships? Why just minority scholarships? Aren't there poor white kids? Aren't there poor uh, white kids that, uh, that, that uh, want to go to Columbia? I'm one of them. Hey, I would have loved to have gone to college. I couldn't get it, you know. And what, what, what qualifies as a minority anymore, anyway? Right. But okay. it's, not just, it's not just them. It's, you know, you got, it's not just the blacks. It's you got Cubans down in Florida that, are, you know, that have destroyed anything south of Orlando. It's Cubans destroyed? No, that, that isn't the reading I get. Oh, what do you, well, I've got... I, I understand, that, uh, I understand that they built a very viable community. Uh, they're entrepreneurs, they're hardworking. Have, have you been to Miami? Have you been to, South, you know, Miami Beach, Hialeah, those areas? Why, it, have you? Yes, it was just, uh, just about two months ago. And? You can't walk the streets. Why not? You want to get jumped? My grandparents have lived down there for the last 20 years. They don't open their doors. They got bars on the windows. You go down there, every house has bars on now, the windows. Now, who, who are you blaming there? I'm saying it's the Cubans coming in. It was all from the Mario boat lift back in the early 80s. It's Castro. Well, I, I, Castro I guess... I, all those criminals and sent them over on a boat. Well, the Cubans I've met have been good citizens, hardworking, uh, law-abiding citizens. So uh, Again, it's the minority. You know, uh, it's, it's always the small faction that makes it look bad for everybody else. On WABC, we're forging ahead... Let's uh, get to our telephones on WABC and say hello to Steve. Steve, you're on WABC. What's on your mind? How you doing, Bob? Just one quick comment about the Rodney King trial. How come everybody seems to forget about the fact that this guy's been arrested two or three times since the last trial? Haven't heard anybody mention anything about it. Well, I mentioned it, but uh, you're right. Not too many people uh, have mentioned it. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Joe, you're on WABC. Hello. Hello, Bob. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing people saying uh, the cops got to change their ways and all this. What they should do is teach the criminals when you're getting locked up, you do what a cop tells you to do. You don't fight them. You don't resist arrest. You know, years ago, people who had always got beat up res resisting arrest. But you see, years ago, they weren't the blacks and the minorities. So n nobody made a big stink out of it. Now, all of a sudden, we've got to change the rules because you've got to give special treatment to blacks and minorities. Why don't they give special treatment and teaching them in school that you obey the law? And when a cop tells you, get up against the car, put your hands behind your back, you put them there. Okay, Joe. Uh, anyway, I want to talk about the civil rights groups. The, uh, the civil rights groups. They go, under the, they go under the name of civil rights. They're Nazi groups. When the NAACP sends its people out to stop people and try and uh, make people pay penalties for, saying, for speaking something that they don't like, they look to have them fired and, and all that other baloney, like that teacher in Jersey. Whatever happened to that case? Well, the poor guy is uh, withering on the vine. Nothing has happened yet. He hasn't gotten his job back. They're stalling him off. They're stalling him off. You know what they say about justice delayed? Justice delayed is justice denied. They're denying David C. Clark his justice. Nobody rallies to his aid. Only the Bob Grant program has shown even, even uh, any interest in uh, this man's travail. It's... Um, it's why we're going down the drain. People say, ah, well, the heck with him. Yeah, Better him than me. It's a disgrace. Oh, he's only a white man. He don't deserve no civil rights. There you uh, go. Thank you, John. Goodbye. Yeah, Aida, what's on your mind this afternoon? Uh, Ada. Ada, okay. Yes, yes hello, sir. Um, I want to tell you that it's not only uh, people like Al Sharpton who ignite... Uh, who who ignite the anger and um, the riots of, as you call them, savages. It's also people like on 2020, Hugh Down, uh, of the week of the riots, he said on his show that it's not Jewish, it's, it's not um, the rioters' fault, it's the Jewish fault that the riots going on. Isn't it incredible somebody would say something like that? Indeed it is. And then I heard Sybil Shepherd of all people on our senior hall saying, it's not a right, it's a revolution. It's uprising for the right. 
Yeah, I hope someday uh, she gets what's coming to her. I don't. Okay, I thank you. I love you, Show. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Linda, what's on your mind this afternoon on WABC? Yes, I'd like to talk about mental illness and crime versus sane mental illness. Um, you had some callers, and I think you agree with them, but I disagree, That uh, who felt that mentioning that somebody might be mentally ill who commits a crime is apologizing for crime. I, I find apologizing for crime horrible. But there are some people who are mentally ill, and I think it's a society that cannot help them, especially when they ask to be helped, is not civilized, and so we know our society is not civilized in many ways. But both the man who killed the rocket, remember that horrible case? Yes. And this man with the baby asked for mental help, and I think I'm not excusing anything, but if you know that someone's mentally ill, they really cannot control themselves. And I'm not talking about lawyers now. One of my favorite sickening things that lawyers do, and I'm sure you'll agree, is when they come into court and they say, my client is innocent, but if he did do it, he was mentally ill. You know, the double defense. Right. But uh, I do think we ought to uh, realize that if we had helped perhaps both of these people, maybe the crimes would not have been committed. But I do want to get now to some other issue of feigned illness. Yesterday you had a call from Giganti, whom I will not call father. And I don't think he's fit to call anybody else corrupt. Uh, we've talked about this before. The Village Voice has done extensive reports on him. I've seen him testify for both of his mob brothers. One he claims is mental ill, but the government calls him a crazy as a fox, Chin Giganti. Yes. And it's sickening to hear him get on and portray, portray himself as this great do-gooder. When all his, even when he was a city councilman, he went to jail for refusing to testify about why he was specializing in counseling mob figures who were in jail. So I, and he's also lied both in court and out of court about who his brothers are and, and the existence of the mob. So I really don't think he deserves any titles or, or any sympathy. On WABC, it is not you or I who uh, confer the title father on him. Uh, that is the title he earned when he became ordained uh, 40 years ago. Putting into this third world uh, state and what we can do about it. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned was the business uh, with uh, ratings, you know, how the uh, media and everything is affected by ratings. Yes. And I think one of the, the causes of this slipping the third worldism is the, is the liberal bias of the media. And we can do something about it, the people that listen to your radio. We can stop supporting the, the newspapers, the magazines, the, the, the news outlets that, uh, you know, slant the news, that always, uh, you know, present the view of Jesse Jackson. Well, that's uh, true, but um, individuals have to make up their own mind. You can't, uh, you can't tell them uh, don't buy it or don't watch it or don't uh, listen to it. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I realize everyone has got freedom of choice, but we could find out the news. Like, there's certain, like, uh, like, like the Wall Street Journal is fairly, you know, like, objective. And there are, like, I guess there's certain uh, media outlets that are okay, but, like, most of it's wrong. And if we stop supporting it, then uh, maybe they'll get the message. Uh, but this is what I've been saying, and I'm, I'm delighted that you agree. Thank you. Hello, Mike. What's on your mind? Yes, Bob. What's on my mind is this thing in Waco, and I need to get your opinion on something. And I want to know, if, if you think that Janet Reno is being wrongly chastised for attacking the compound yesterday? Now, I, I, I followed it a little bit, and then I got tired of the media, you know, hounding on it and, you know, saying that they weren't doing things right. Then all of a sudden they attacked the compound, and this inferno erupts. And now, you know, this is a this is an awkward position because I don't want to defend her because I I, I really loathe her. But uh, in, in the interest of fairness, I have to tell you, the thinking was, let's puncture holes in the walls, shoot in tear gas. Right. And, and they will come out. Well, see, then there was a lady on the air today and she chastised the FBI yeah. for attacking them kids. Well, she can chastise anybody she wants. Uh, I'm telling you what I think. Thank right. you, Mike. Thanks, Bob. That slams the lid on things for today. Until tomorrow, this is Bob Grant reminding you, when quotas replace merit, we all suffer. Yes, Mr. Grant, I, I hold you in the highest esteem, so I don't want to soften you with that. But on this theme of uh, what's going on, I know you must be sick and tired of hearing about it, but uh, there's a thing you have to look at. The, the way it was all put about, uh, you know, it was the, I, I don't subscribe to the theories of... Uh, conspiracies and things like that but when you look at what happened uh, how close was it to the vote in new jersey what a what a convenient thing to get a few guys maybe they thought one guy would get shot maybe they thought uh, a few shots would be out and they would get the cachet of weapons and 
parade them in front of anybody. I know you hate guns. I hate guns. But I hate the society we live in. And I tune into you as a breath of fresh air. I tune into you as, uh, as sanity because you're the only one that has the guts to go on radio and say the right things at the right time. And you fear not what, you know, all the politicians and all the politics will do to you. You're, 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 you're fearless. But on this issue, you, I couldn't sleep last night. I, I tossed with this. You know, I might say, yeah, I don't have a life. I listen to you as a breath of sanity. I'm involved in politics. I take things to heart. And this thing is really, really, really cheesy. You know, she gets voted in. He gets, his, he gets somebody to hide behind. And he goes ahead and invades these people. If these, he was a nut. Yes, I agree with you in all the senses. He was a nut. He was a crazy person. But he was left alone. And the channels would have been taken. Let's say you get the National Guard. Why spend uh, six million to blockade him? Let's put the National Guard around the premises, which costs us nothing. You know, they're paid. They go out. Uh, it's like a holiday. Well, how much is the National Guard to surround the premises? And tell them, no food? Cut the gas. No. Now, the people, uh, you see how quickly they surrendered in, in the jail now? Because, huh, now they might do something. Because the Democrats... Raul, were... Raul, the, the people in the jail were not the, the religious fanatics... Not the people who are following uh, a okay, madman. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. they were okay. they, they were criminals, but they were different, different but individuals, Bobby, really, different mentality. With this, with this touch, I want you to know something. I idolize you. I never called the. Why do you keep my saying life. that? Why do you keep saying that? No, because uh, because you are. You're one of my heroes. Yeah, but why do you I, keep saying that? Because you are. I don't want to soften you with it. I don't want to play games with you. Is there you. a hidden I'm message? I'm trying to control you with Is it. Is there a hidden message here? No, there's no hidden message, really, really. Well, I okay. really, I really yeah, think... Uh, look, you're getting on my nerves. You keep saying how okay, great I am, it, and, yet, and yet you said... You All right, I think... You, you Oof, know, I'm nobly. So long, Bob, Raul. Bob, 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 so long, please, Raul. Please, give me a break. No, you, you don't break. give me a break. I'm trying to explain something to you, damn tell it. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, you keep saying how great I am, and then you say... Yeah, but you couldn't sleep last night because of something I had said. But you don't tell me what it was I said. Well, no, your whole stance on the situation. Your whole stance, you, you know, you, let's let the facts come in. Let's don't cloud them. Let's look at what happened over there. Why couldn't they surround the premises with the National Guard? Shut the water like they did and wait. We can wait. We wanted to starve Iraq <laughs> with all the holes that could be punched in delivering you know how everything goes on the ground it can be delivered in the, in the black market and how many people you saw the feckless idiot in jordan how he would he would help this guy who was going to try to control and which was an agent of of communist russia russia was testing us at that point they didn't know whether to have a little conventional war or to give up <laughs> i'm getting a little bit sidetracked but why don't surround it with national guard okay you said that you million? said that 10 times okay about okay let's cut it to once and, and uh, but we went in with it with tanks, M1 tanks and breaking it. That guy, if he was left alone, he had guns because he was afraid of the society we live in. He was a, an irrational nut. I agree with you. Okay. I agree with you 100%, but look behind. All right, all right. Okay. Thank you, Raul. Thank okay, you. Bob. Thanks. Chacharon, maron. The right, Raul. Uh, he, he made a, I admit he made a mistake, but he, he's a politician. At the time the election was going on, so naturally... Uh, he would say, I, I think he regretted now, because every, everybody knows that this, this thug out there was, was uh, you know, maybe there's no way they could restrain him. And you, even you yourself said you were a little sickening by the tapes when you saw the beat. Yeah, but there's a, big too... there's a big difference between my saying that and the President of the United States and yeah. the President of the United States who uh, sanctioned uh, the uh, second trial. Yeah. Uh, I would have preferred that he was a, a real mensch and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, these guys were acquitted at a court of law, and uh, I don't believe in double jeopardy, but he, he went ahead. He went ahead uh, with everybody else and approved of that second trial. Well, Mr. Grant, I don't think, I don't think you should blame him for... I, I think a lot of pressure was on him, and, uh, and then, like I say, after all, he is a politician, and uh, it just seemed as though to me it was, it was just a little put down on a great president. Uh, you know, and I, I just can't... Uh, understand that coming from you, because I know you like the man as much as I did. Well, I, I worked very hard to try to get him reelected, but uh, that's because between uh, uh, he and uh, the alternatives, he was far superior. But uh, that doesn't mean that he was uh, peachy keen perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you for the call. Right. Uh, Romaine, uh, what's on your mind this afternoon? Hi, Mr. Clance. This is Romaine from the Bronx. This is my first time calling you. I've only recently started listening to you. 
Uh-huh. What I want to say to you, I'm a little bit nervous, but what I want to say to you is that I find you very, very offensive. I think that you probably incite more riots with your rhetoric than anybody in Los Angeles. I think that your show should be taken off, and as of today, this is the last time I'm listening to you. Uh, with that, she hung up, so I can't even respond and ask her what riots I'm responsible for. Uh, Romaine of the Bronx uh, hung up on me uh, because uh, she didn't want to hear what I had to say in response. I was going to ask her. She, she said I was responsible for more riots than uh, in Los Angeles. I wondered what riots she's talking about. I guess we'll never know. Bernie, you're at WABC. Hello. Bob, there's something that's always mystified me. That is how people with, who, who have a particular skin color can think that it's okay because they have this particular skin color to resist the law. Now, now I, I see this, but I, I, I'm mystified by why the liberal press excuses this and justifies this. For example, I, I can't pick up a New York Times w without them saying, uh, without them beginning with a first paragraph of an article saying, justifiable rage. And, uh, you know, I used to live down the street from the Times. And uh, anybody who, who, uh, who, who lives in that neighborhood or knows that neighborhood knows that uh, anybody who can remain a liberal in that neighborhood has to be absolutely nuts. Now, uh, this is a rhetorical question, but can you explain to me how liberals can remain liberal in the face of this craziness that's facing us today? Let's be heard. Good afternoon, everyone. The telephone lines are open. The number to call in uh, New Jersey, 201-489-WABC. If you're calling from anywhere else, 212-563-WABC. In a program dedicated to the free and open exchange of ideas and of opinions. And what is on your mind this afternoon? It was a travesty of justice. It was a travesty of justice for many reasons, not the least of which was that the case in Los Angeles was determined not by circumstances within the four walls of a courtroom, but determined by circumstances out in the jungles we call streets of Los Angeles. There is not the slightest doubt in my mind that were it not for the constant threat of rioting and looting and killing, which, by the way, happened last year, were it not for that threat, Lawrence Powell and Stacey Kuhn would have also been found not guilty. But ladies and gentlemen, above all else, this is a violation of the Constitution because the Constitution says you cannot be tried for the same crime twice. The only, the only uh, flaw there is there was no crime in the first place. But People who are civilized, people who are not prone to savagery, people who do not live with constant rage, accept the verdict, even though they don't like it, and hope and pray that on appeal it will be overturned. Barring that, hope and pray that the judge will mete out a minimum sentence. But remember, the judge is going to be just as intimidated as the jury. And therefore, to mete out a minimum sentence is very unlikely. But who lost? Who really lost? I mean, Lawrence Powell, Stacey Kuhn? Yes, directly they lost. But all of America lost. All of America lost not because they were found guilty, but the reason there was a second trial to begin with and the reason they were found guilty. 
in all the reports, there was one, uh, I believe, on our own network. I wish I, I wish I had to ruin uh, Arledge's job for just a minute. I'd like to fire Judy Muller. Smiling, beaming, ebullient, triumphant. Ah, Los Angeles breathed a sigh of relief. Everybody's happy. No, everybody's not happy. Incredible. You know, someone said to me, well, would you compare this to the holding of hostages in a kidnapping, and once the ransom is paid, the kidnapped uh, person is let go? I said, uh, not really. I'll tell you why I can't say this is the same. In a classic case of kidnapping where ransom is demanded, the person that the kidnapper is holding is ostensibly alive. And the deal is, if you pay us the money, we'll let this person go. If you don't pay us the money, then, of course, you will not find this person alive. But, ladies and gentlemen, the ransom was paid after they had killed their captive. And what do I mean by that? <laughs> People talk about avoiding a riot. We didn't avoid a riot. We had one last year that cost at least three, let's see, at least 600 to $700 billion. Uh, excuse me, 600 to $700 million. So, don't forget, we already had that riot. Tell you something else. Residents were interviewed, residents of uh, South Central Los Angeles, and not all those residents are bad people. As a matter of fact, most of them are a good, decent people. They're held hostage, too, even though they're black. They're held hostage by the, the black scum that control that part of town. And uh, they were asked, they were asked about how they felt. And do you know that they could hardly get over the fact that they felt safe Saturday night? And when they said they felt safe, they weren't talking about feeling safe from Stacey Kuhn or Lawrence Powell. They were talking about feeling safe from the thugs, the marauders, the mutants in their own neighborhood. That's what they were talking about. One lady says, this is the first time I can remember that I, that I walked outside without, without looking over my shoulder, without being scared stiff. And uh, there were other uh, comments made similar to that. A black man said, it's safe, but I don't see why we can't have this sort of presence all the time. A woman described as Hispanic uh, said, the police should be around like this more often. And another black woman said, it was wonderful. For the first time, I was able to just go out for a walk on Saturday night and enjoy myself without always looking over my shoulder for someone. These voices asking to be secure in the neighborhoods against predators are the voices of reality. Not the voices of myth. I say somehow or other there was a catharsis in the second trial. I want to quote a, uh, an editorial of one of the nation's papers that said, If the King verdict says to the black community that justice can prevail, what does it say to those charged with enforcing safety? We want you to go out and protect the citizens in places like South Central Los Angeles. Society says to police officers, from someone who leads you on a 115 mile an hour auto chase, who shrugs off electrical stun guns, who may or may not be high on strength inducing drugs, but if in the process you lose your cool and indulge in a degree of force that may leave no lasting injury, and remember, Rodney King has no lasting injury, but is later judged excessive. You will not only be drummed out of the police force, but convicted of a felony and sent to prison as a criminal yourself. And if a jury acquits you on these charges, we will try you again. 
double jeopardy protections applying to drug dealers being waived for policemen. We doubt that in the end this message will prevail in the long appeals process that lies ahead. But if it does, we also doubt that the citizens appearing will enjoy more than occasional nights of safety and peace. Uh, as you know, the uh, turning to another subject, the compound in Waco, Texas was burned down. Burned down by followers of David Koresh. There probably will be a lot of uh, stories written about the incident at Waco with a lot of different versions. And the blame will try to be placed on on others, but make no mistake, the fire was set by followers of David Koresh, not by the FBI or the agents for the, Ameri uh, for the uh, alcohol, firearms, and tobacco people. One uh, other note, Timothy Wind and Theodore Bersenio were found not guilty. They were acquitted. But make no mistake, their lives are shattered. It will be difficult for them to pick up the pieces and put those pieces back together. And although they were found innocent of all charges, Timothy Wine, 32, a rookie on probation in March of 1991, was booted off the force and has little chance of being rehired. Theodore Brasigno, age 40, suspended without pay after the beating, faces a departmental hearing before he gets his job back and nearly $100,000 in back pay. He said he doesn't want the job. Who can blame him? And so for both men, things will never be the same. But Rodney King, no doubt now, the, pave, the uh, way is paved for him to win a big suit against the city of Los Angeles. He is a celebrity invited to various affairs and he's going to live a high life but the seeds of his own destruction are still within him and ere too long those seeds will again bloom only let's hope this time four innocent men are not charged in the case. Hey, hello, Bob. Yes, Bob. I'd like to describe why I believe uh, you've been a fake and a phony on this uh, King issue for, for two and a half years now. Uh, before any riots took place, before any second trials uh, took place, uh, when you first saw this videotape two and a half years ago, I remember you saying that the cops went too far uh, in the beating of Rodney King. Because uh, I'm a listener of yours, and I do remember this. Then with the complications of riots and second trials, you've ch totally changed your tune on the issue of excessive uh, force by the police. Well, what do you want me to say? You, you want me to tell you what I've told some other person who uh, pointed the same thing out, only they didn't call me a fake, a phony, and a fraud, as you have so generously done? Uh, my initial reaction was basically no different than anybody else's. I responded to what George Holliday's tape showed. But after I read transcripts of the trial, after I had uh, seen accounts of, uh, of what uh, other people had said who know more about professional police work than either you or I, then I came to the conclusion that uh, the initial uh, emotional reaction I had was wrong. And I said so. Uh, so if, you, if the important thing to you is uh, Bob Grant rather than the actual trial, uh, then you've got uh, interesting priorities, Bob. Interesting priorities. Well, I'd like to say that I've spoken to New York City police officer on this who will privately say that they went too far. Uh, and maybe he, emotionally they feel he deserved it and all of that, but technically speaking, with, as far as police guidelines are concerned, uh, the, the, uh, police, the police should not be executors of punishment. They are apprehenders only. Well, I, I agree. I don't know why you're still teed off at me, but uh, if you want to be teed off, go ahead. Be my guest. Uh, WABC, here's Nick checking in. Hello, Nick. 
Hello, Bob. You know, I think it was either yesterday or today was the 50th anniversary to, commem to commemorate the Holocaust and the victims of the Holocaust. I think that was the last time up until today that a mass of men, women, and children in a confined space were gassed. Uh, I condemn Bill Clinton and Janet Reno for allowing and unleashing the invasion of the Koresh compound by making it clear to the fanatics that the standoff was going to end today and then gassing the people in the building little by little. The FBI created a scenario for, that, that drove the most insanely fanatical criminals in that compound to ignite flammable substances. And then uh, what apparently, according to the latest reports, the, uh, the death of about uh, two-thirds or the death and injury of two-thirds of the human beings in that place. Some of those people were innocent 10- and 12-year-old children. What in the name of God and common human decency would have been the harm in waiting them out? The tragedy that I... Th this, this tragedy, I fear was motivated by political concerns and self-serving concerns on the part of the of the administration and and the uh, and the FBI. All so right, all right, enough already, enough of your hot air, you jerk, comparing putting tear gas in the place with uh, Zyklon Z. You're comparing gas that the Nazis used, which was designed to kill people, with tear gas? You're a jerk, Nick. You always have been. You are now. You always will be. Get off my phone, you fink. Hello, John. What's on your mind this afternoon? Hi, Bob. I knew they'd try and blame it on the FBI. Bob, uh, I'd like to... No, no, it's not they. It's just one guy, a triple-A Sokola by the name of Nick of Bergenfield. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of them out there like him, too. All right, what do you want to uh, say, Bob, John? I want to speak about the verdict in L.A., but firstly, I'd like to say the gays exposed their agenda of, of uh, intimidation through name-calling when they referred to you as homophobic when you nailed them as to their percentage of the population. I believe you said it was less than 1%. No, I said it was less than 2%. Okay. But, uh, you know, Bob, anyone who's phobic or paranoid believes there's a disproportionate number of what they're afraid of, and they're surrounded by them. You're saying the opposite. So they use homophobic for all occasions, because so many have been intimidated by it, and they think they can silence the opposition by using that terminology. But, Bob, those who say the verdict in Los Angeles was was fair, it'll never be fair. Because as you said, those officers shouldn't have been on trial a second time to begin with. David Dinkins appearing with, I believe, uh, Carol Jenkins, another biased lefty, said, I'm not entirely satisfied with this verdict, but I accept it as I've accepted all verdicts. Well, we can add liar to David Dinkins' list of transgressions. He did not accept the first verdict in L.A., calling it a miscarriage of justice. And after the Bensonhurst verdict, he made the divisive, a liberal term, remark in St. Patrick's Cathedral yet that all the white defendants should have been found guilty in the first degree. Th this guy's lying is pathological, Bob. He lied about his reason why he didn't pay his taxes for four years, his stock transfer to his son. Now he's denying that he said he wanted no part of the reopening of Ellis Island because whites emigrated through there while blacks came on slave ships. And uh, there's a direct quote on this uh, on file to that effect, so he can't deny it. And Carol Jenkins referred to David Dinkins as our leader at the end of the, end of the uh, interview. Well, he may be her leader, Bob, because he's the same color, and that's all that really matters to her. But I choose my leaders who have a philosophy far different from anti-American, white-hating David Dinkins. And by the way, the tough ex-Marine used... Go ahead. I know we have a report coming up at 30.30. Go ahead, please. Finish. But, uh, this, the tough ex-Marine David Dinkins used his standard excuse that... His busy schedule wouldn't allow him to appear on the morning show last Friday because he knew Lisa was in Los Angeles and he couldn't hide behind her beret. All right. Thank you, John. Thanks. Bob, you're on WABC. Hello. Hello, Bob. How are you? I just wanted to make a comment first and then ask you a quick question, if I could. My comment is that I think with these people in L.A., they really have to realize, and people across the country have to realize what these, these crazy people on drugs are like and the cops are actually really getting a short, the short end of the stick when they're, they don't have the arms, the ammunition, and, the, and they have to follow these, these crazy rules that are, are laid on them by the people that the criminals don't have to follow. So first of all, these police officers are out there underarmed and definitely outmanned, and, and we really have to look at it. I used to work at an at a outdoor amphitheater for rock concerts years ago, and people on drugs, as you can well imagine, at these rock concerts, you don't know what it took to get these people under control. Uh, as far as the L.A. riots go, or the L.A., uh, the, the police officer situation there, I think they did use a little bit too much force. They had them down. They could have tied them up. But 
they're, they're under a lot of pressure, and I think they're getting a lot of the, definitely the short end of the stick. A um, question to you is, why did they get tried twice? Was it a state thing first, and then it went federal? I'm, I don't really understand that. Well, of course, the, the, uh, the charge that uh, initially uh, they were indicted for was a state charge. Okay. Uh, the federal government doesn't enter into cases like that. And um, the uh, four were acquitted. So then the federal government came along and said, all right, so they were acquitted of, of, uh, of beating them up, but we're going to try them on a charge of violating his constitutional rights. It's all double talk. So uh, W-A-B-C, let's say hello to Joe. Joe, hello. Yes, hi, Bob. I just wondered if you had an opportunity to look at the uh, C-SPAN on Saturday night in which this professor of law was taking a call regarding um, whether there's any more gray zone to be determined by the professionals themselves in their own peer review when it comes to a case of supposed misconduct. And he replied in the affirmative that it, you know, there is still a gray zone, but that the police job he claimed was a very tough job. It just seems a little bit sanctimonious and probably a little hypocritical in the extreme. Now, why is it that lawyers, particularly certain members of the legal profession, tend to uh, follow policies that seem to systematically dismantle the professionalism of other professions? I mean, it happened in medicine. Look at the body of case law which exists in medical malpractice and which basically straitjackets physicians in their interactions with patients. You take a look now at what's happening to the police and you see an endless stream of retrospective, non-professional critique and review of police conduct so that the nosocomial review mechanisms of the LAPD them itself is not sufficient. They have to be tried by a jury of their peers, and even when the jury of the peers found these four police officers to be innocent, they indeed have to be second-guessed by a federal jury. It seems that every professional standard in this country is now subject to the peer review of the masses, of the great unwashed, as you like to call them. And I feel it's just going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. This systematic, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, campaign on the part of certain quarters in the legal profession that has the effect, whether it's intended or not, in, in public policy terms, of just systematically dismantling the professionalism of other professions. Um, I don't really know where it's going to end. Uh, well, uh, uh, there is no end to it. It will continue and continue until eventually uh, the uh, the full blown status of third worldism is upon us, and then maybe from there we will uh, find ourselves in a fascist uh, type of uh, environment. But that'll be long after we're Hi. gone. Hi, good afternoon, Bob. I'd like to know. Maybe you can answer me. Uh, if the White House can condone this kind of action being taken in Waco, Texas, why can't? They okay the same kind of action being taken uh, against prison rioters for some, if, in, in in some sort of way. Why don't they go into prisons with tear gas? Well, Not tear gas, tear gas has uh, tear gas has been used in riots uh, in prisons past. Not just this, this recent one. Well, not in Lucasville. It hasn't Maybe been. Maybe because they were black Muslims. Probably. And these were, were white Christians. Isn't it interesting that the. Uh, uh, one guard came out dead. He was white. Another guard was released alive. He was black. I wonder why. Think about it. Thank you. Uh, Paul, you're on WABC. Paul from Denville. Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. Grant. I know you don't like rhetorical questions, but let me ask this one anyway. Is the man's name Rodney King, or is his name black motorist Rodney King? Because every time I see something about him in the paper or hear about it on the TV news, it's always black motorist Rodney King. They make it sound like the guy was just out for a drive and he got pulled over by the big bad white policeman because he's black and beaten to a pulp because he's black. Yeah, they should have said ex-convict, felon, right. uh, fleeing, uh, uh, fleeing uh, motorist, if they want to uh, use the word motorist, a fleeing motorist. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, only th the only thing uh, is going to be small comfort. Uh, he... he has within him the seeds of his own destruction because he's an he's a antisocial mutant and uh, mutants don't change. Bob, just one other thing. We are no longer slipping and sliding. We're in a free fall. On WABC, people love to discuss uh, relative uh, verbs. It's amazing.
get hung up on a, on a verb. Slipping, sliding, careening, free-falling. Hello, Frank. You're at WABC. Good afternoon, Bob. Bob, how would you respond to this situation? I have a friend that's a teacher in the fifth grade up in the Bronx, and um, he was, uh, I think right now they're teaching about the uh, crystal knock and how the Germans, uh, you know, they, what did they, they the whole thing with the Jews and everything like that. And in the fifth grade, the kids were around 10 years old, so they were describing the situation. And one of the kids said to my friend, well, isn't that what the Jews are doing now to the Palestinians? And it, like, threw my friend totally back, didn't know how to respond to that. Well, what do you mean, didn't know how to respond? Uh, it didn't know. I, mean, it, it, I guess the kids are so in tune to what's happening today, even at 10 well, years old. Well, if he, if he didn't know how to respond, then he's not in tune. No, no, I'm because there's no kids. comparison between what Hitler did and what is going on in, uh, in uh, Samaria and Judea. No comparison. It's yeah. absurd. So then the kid just was totally off base. Then. You need me to tell you that, Frank? No, I, I'm, I'm just... Are you so stupid you need me to tell you that? Are they rounding people up and putting them in gas chambers, Frank? Are they? No. Okay, get off my phone, you dope. So sick and tired of listening to all the criticism that we've been heaping on our law enforcement people. And I think that's the problem or one of the major problems of the country today. The, peace, the police and the, and the law enforcement people, they can't do a job. They're afraid. They're damned if they do and damned if they don't. And I think that's the problem you had in Waco. I think it's the problem you had in the Los Angeles riots. The police are procrastinating. Even our president, the president of the United States, we call him Slick Willie. He's wishy-washy. Well, maybe they did and maybe they didn't. And Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you something. We better get some hard head knocking cops back on the force or we're all in deep trouble. Well, we are in deep trouble, and you're absolutely right. The police can't do their job if they've got to be uh, worried about second-guessing. And uh, that's what happens. You know, Slick Willie, though, he's so slick. Yesterday, uh, he made the statement that it was uh, strictly Janet Reno's decision. And then he took heat, even from people in his own party. They said, you know, you're looking bad. You're looking like you're hiding behind her skirts. And uh, now today, he's saying, oh, I take full responsibility. And you know what annoys me is a lot of Gabons are impressed with the fact he's saying he takes full responsibility. He's vacillating. He's bouncing back and forth like he does on every other issue. That's because he's a fake, he's a phony, he's a fraud, and I thank you for the call, Bob. Okay, thank you, Bob. All right, Valetti, what's on your mind? Uh, I have a very cynical thought about the children who were consumed with parents like that where the father gives them mother to caress. Um, Yes. Um, you, you know, I mean, they could have only had a very tortured life. And, you know, we know that more grown-ups commit suicide than children. Children don't, in some way, suffer as... M their, their minds are not as complicated. They can't um, have as much imagination. So that they would have eventually, probably, with a background like that, with those crazy parents, they would have had a tortured life. And I just feel maybe they're better off. It's a very cynical thought. Well, it's not as cynical as you might think, uh, Valetti. Um, it's uh, the type of thought, and I'm not patronizing you, it's the type of thought that only a person of some sophistication and some sense of the world mm. and some uh, ability uh, to uh, be, uh, gee, I know this sounds awfully pompous of me, to be profound. Well, Only a person who has the ability to be profound could say what you've said, and I commend you for it, and I thank you. Yes, and I think we have a fifth column now. We can go back to that term. We have amateurs in the White House and a fifth column all around us. We are truly under siege. We Ab really are. Absolutely, and we've got to m make people aware of it. And we, you know, we have a, a, a man who's pretending to be Santa Claus in the White House. It's unbelievable. Well, all right, my dear. Thank you, and you're the best. It's a pleasure to talk to you, buddy. Thank you. Tom, you're on WABC. Hello. Hi, Bob. Great to speak to you again. I just want to comment on your earlier guest, David Brock. Yes. I want you to know that despite all the empirical evidence that there may be that Anita Hill lied to a uh, congressional committee, there'll be no action by Congress on this because both the Democrats and the Republicans in Congress are so afraid of the woman's lobby that you won't hear a peep. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's a shame that... Uh uh, that people are so cowardly, they uh, uh, they run from the truth and uh, prefer to uh, uh, to live a lie. And if that is the case, uh, then uh, our demise 
is even closer at hand. It's at hand, but it's even closer at hand than I had suspected. Can you imagine if it was a conservative uh, guy who had lied or there was a belief that he had lied to Congress? They'd make another Oliver North out of it. Absolutely. But because it's a woman, a politically correct woman, I should say, you don't hear anything. Yeah, and of course it wasn't just she. Uh, this Susan Hirschner should be prosecuted for lying to Congress. Right. And my final comment, is there any chance we could send a, a copy of uh, David Brock's book to Lynn Samuels? Why? What good would it do? People, you know, there are some people who choose to believe what they want to believe and uh, don't want to be deterred by the facts. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hey, look, look. She's unimportant. <coughs> Truly unimportant. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Uh, hello, Tom. You're on WABC. Hi, Bob. Uh, there's been a number of uh, things that have been going on over the airwaves that you may or may not be cognizant about. There's an early morning... Uh, <clears throat> disc jockey who uh, has had such personalities as Clinton when he was at uh, his very lowest point when he came to New York and he's had uh, the governor of New Jersey on now and the last week or so he's been really bad mouthing you uh, about your sexuality, cross-dressing uh, being a member of the Man-Boy Association. Now I know it's all done in jest or is it? Because he comes across and his cohorts come across as being rather serious about it in any event, I resent the innuendos, and I just am bringing it to your attention because uh, he's going pretty far out in the limb, and he's leaving himself open to uh, some kind of suit because um, he reaches a large audience, and um, I know that you may not be up at that time of the morning, but he's on between 5 and 10. You're talking about Imus. Why be so mysterious? Because I don't want to uh, give him any additional publicity. Well, I don't I feel do, he don't, deserves it. Yeah, don't be afraid. Uh, well, you see... Guys like Imus and Stern are lucky in one respect. Nobody takes them seriously. Uh, the public knows they're both clowns and, and both uh, speak uh, uh, just uh, to be uh, silly, uh, just uh, to, for effect. But, Bob, this uh, I say things on. and people take me seriously because uh, of my background and because uh, I know what I'm talking about. But these are, these are our idiots who are capitalizing on... Uh, the trend towards uh, towards talk radio. Bob, what these trend? Are, these are image makers and rather effective image makers. And, well, uh, all right, let, let me. Uh, I shouldn't get away with these things. Well, does anybody believe that I'm a cross dresser? Does anybody believe that I'm a fagula? Huh? No, but it, it, okay. So what's the difference? They shouldn't go out.